So uh, welcome back, everybody. Uh, we have a real treat in store for you. We have a actual you know, hands-on technical workshop with uh, a few people from Amazon. But with us today, we have uh, several, uh, several colleagues from Amazon who have gratefully stepped up to do this, I think somewhat last minute. So I would like to introduce uh, Sean Lyle. He is the senior solutions architect from Amazon. His colleagues, Chris and Andy, will be joining him in a little bit. So without further ado, please help me welcome Sean. Thank you. Hello, how's everybody doing today? I don't think I said that very well with enunciation. It was like missing some syllables. So we're gonna talk about uh, some of the uh, applications uh, that you can use uh, Amazon, uh, media Amazon Web Services, uh, media services specifically for. We're gonna be going into uh, VOD and we're gonna go into some live workflows. Um, how many people in the room do not know what a live versus VOD workflow is? I don't see, oh, I see one hand. All right, so then there'll be a few slides here that, uh, that you'll enjoy. Before we actually, whoops, I'm clicking things. Before we actually get started though, uh, we do wanna talk about the 4K for charity. Uh, this is something that we do regularly. Uh, the donations are gonna go to Girls Who Code, you can come out and you can walk four, kilom four kilometers, or you can opt to uh, sit on the couch and donate uh, to it. We do this, we've done this since uh, the CEO uh, of our company, uh, Sam Blackman, back when we were just elemental, uh, started this at an NAV. Um, and that's good times. Um, so I'm gonna move forward on this. We're gonna be talking about Live with VOD, like I mentioned. Uh, since we had one hand, uh, we've got two applications. Uh, with Live and VOD, there's, there's some overlay. So you've got user-generated content, you've got broadcast uh, TV, you've got IoT, you've got eSports. These are all things that, you, that you're, you're gonna to wanna to do a live application and a video on demand application with. But there are some slight differences between that. So with live streaming, is this my laptop causing the issue, guys? Kind of glitching, I'm trying to move it just to make sure. Um, so on the, the live side, you've got live events. You've got things uh, like you know, uh, your regular sporting events, you've got eSports, uh, maybe you've got sports gambling, which uh, will be at, at a website near you nationwide, as I've heard. Um, you've got corporate events. Maybe you're doing a town hall meeting and you want to be able to uh, publish that worldwide, but you need to do that without a lot of uh, latency. Um, so, and then in the VOD side of things, uh, subscription services. Uh, so any of your popular movies on demand, uh, things like that, that you would go into. But you also, in, in the VOD services, if you were to go back to that sporting events uh, analogy, maybe you uh, capture a highlights reel and you wanna take that and republish it. Uh, so you could take uh, a video on demand application and make that content available to your end users at a later date. Um, so in a live streaming workflow, you very commonly have the event taking place. You've got your production. Uh, that production is going out to a process locally which is then prepping that for uh, ingestion into the cloud, and then you're gonna actually use the cloud to process that out to your end user um, who will be receiving the content. Um, video on demand, very similar. You have a media asset. Uh, you're not contributing directly into process. You can actually uh, contribute that into a storage, so you could have an archive that you've uh, got pre-existing. Um, or you could be publishing assets as needed. You're gonna take that, do the same type of processing, and you're gonna deliver that out to your end consumer. Um, in a live production workflow, you, uh, you basically need to be considering what encoder hardware you're gonna use on-prem to push that signal out into the cloud. You need to be paying attention to things like uh, video quality. You need to be paying attention to things like latency. Um, are you on a managed network? Are you on a public network? I remember when we were doing this early, you'd go to an event and the same Wi-Fi would be used for all of you that we would be using to publish the video uh, prior to my existence at AWS and that would cause a lot of problems. Uh, so you gotta be aware of all of these things, uh, whether or not you got bandwidth constraints, things like that. Uh, in that workflow, you typically have a full production crew who's been doing this uh, for a long time. They've been pushing through satellite usually and now that's all moving to a copper wire 
Uh, that, that will get published into either a direct connect to AWS, uh, which you can see, is that the, uh, I don't remember. Uh, so you can publish that via RTMP over a direct connect. Uh, nowadays, you can also use our Media Connect service, um, and you can use Zixi as well as Wrist to get that into the cloud, uh, where you can either store it uh, in an S3 bucket for later servicing, or you could run it directly to a process. Uh, we also support user-based content. So if a user is recording things on their iPhone, uh, and then they, they push it up into a service that you've uh, done within an app, let's say, um, that can go into uh, processing and distribution within the cloud. Um, so in, in the live sense, you're, as, I, as I mentioned, in a real-time sense, pushing that video up to the cloud, the cloud's processing it, getting it back down to the user. In the VOD sense, you're taking a media asset that's pre-existing or perhaps created during that VOD event and then reusing that to actually push to storage. Amazon, has, we have a lot of different um, options for how you can store that media. Uh, AWS Direct Connect can get that media in uh, at, a, at a very fast pace. Uh, Amazon S3 storage is a very popular option for how people can store. And then there's a lot of other options that, that we have for collecting massive amounts of data to do uh, much more than just video processing if you want to be analyzing your, your media. Um, Amazon S3 being the most popular is uh, what I was going to focus on for a moment. Uh, this is uh, highly available storage, uh, available wor worldwide, and has uh, multiple tiers of storage so that you can have the uh, content ready and available now, or you could have the content uh, storing um, in, at, a, uh, at a lower availability level uh, to save you some money. Uh, you're going to take that content from that storage. You're going to end up processing that through. And both of these workflows, common, uh, both of these workflows have a common output. Uh, that would be adaptive bitrate streaming. Does there, anybody not know what adaptive streaming is in the audience? Because I'm going to blow through this in a slide to not waste your time. If uh, yep, no hands, cool. So uh, in that workflow. Um, give you this slide for a second before I move on. So at your live event, you're going to take that source. You're going to create a redundant output. That's why we've got an input A and B uh, to, the, to the encoder. You're going to create an output group and an output package. So you've got your source happening at venue. And then you've got it creating outputs that are coming into the cloud. The cloud's going to then transcode those into an output group which would essentially be your adaptive package, and then push it on, again, still redundant, uh, to an origin, uh, which we call media package, and then out to uh, CDN. Um, as far as getting the video into the cloud, we kind of already talked about, uh, we do have a new product called uh, uh, Media Connect. So you can use RTMP to push content. You can use RTP. Highly recommend using that with forward error correction. Uh, you can use Zixi now. You can use Wrist. Um, and then within Media Connect, you can actually pull that into the cloud and make it available to multiple people. So rather than pulling it into the cloud and straight processing it, you could actually pull it into the cloud and then make it available to multiple, let's say you have a, um, a network that was interested in your content. And then they can process it within their engine. Um, you can also set up a poll model. Uh, so you could have the cloud reaching out from the cloud, looking for the content from your encoder, um, and, and make that uh, available to the, to the transcode process. So when we start talking about creating outputs and adaptive streaming and how you get that to your end customers, you get, you've got a lot of options. Uh, we support most of those options. You've got the ability to archive it. You've got the ability to do HTTP live streaming or HLS. You've got the ability to do smooth streaming, uh, UDP, RTP as an output. Um, and then you can do that into actual output groups where you are segregating that traffic uh, based on uh, decisions that you're making, maybe who's logging in, maybe what device they're logging in on, things like that. Um, and then you've got some additional features. I'm not going to go into these additional features uh, today 
because uh, we want to keep it a little more low level. We'd, we'd have to take the, the whole day if we started getting into things like this. But that'd be a good opportunity to mention. We do have something called immersion days. So if anybody in the audience um, is uh, interested in actually taking uh, a course with people uh, within the environment, we can come in and we can actually do a custom-built immersion day uh, that, that essentially shows the team how to use each one of these and we're sitting with, with, uh, with everybody to, to work through an ad insertion or DRM or something that, that takes a little bit more uh, time. So now we're going back and we're going to talk about the same thing in a VOD workflow because we're kind of trying to segregate the difference in those things. Um, so with VOD, you're going you're gonna to deliver a high quality uh, broadcast experience. Uh, you could also be delivering kind of a uh, NPVR or TiVo type of experience where users are logging in and deciding when they want to watch rather than logging into something that's taking place now. Uh, within our uh, video on demand system, rather than running a live event, you're running an actual job. You're sending that job out to a queue. If you run a lot of jobs, you can run it to a job template to save yourself time. So you, if you're doing something a lot of times, you can set up a template and you can actually run an API against this. Um, I'm, I'm trying to move a little bit fast because I want to get to uh, hands-on training because I think that's why you all are here. So media convert workflow, uh, you essentially, it's very, very similar to live. The difference is you can accelerate that transcoding. So live, the whole purpose is to keep up with a live event and get that video out to the end user. With a uh, media convert or uh, video on demand workflow, you can make that uh, job take a lot less time, uh, as well as you can publish an entire library of, of content. You can push that to different queues that have different priorities uh, so that you can take things that need to happen uh, ASAP versus things that you can wait for uh, and publish them to different queues to actually get to your, uh, your outputs. There's, there's an interesting one here, too, that, that it's uh, talking about, uh, which is CloudWatch. So all of these things uh, can be monitored uh, in the cloud. Uh, that end up sending you an email, sending you an alert via an app that, that is created. Uh, it's constantly able to give you feedback on what your, uh, on what the health and uh, status of the jobs uh, that are being sent. So I, I mentioned email, but you, you can go down to text message. You can have a Lambda function if you guys, uh, if everybody in the room understands uh, what that is. So you can have a quick response where if something fails, uh, it kicks off another process uh, because it's a known uh, use case. This is where VOD and live really separate. Live, we're trying to get a stream into the cloud in a very uh, select function. So RTMP, uh, like I said, Zixi, Wrist. When you get to VOD, you can use a very wide range of not just codec, but the wrapper of that codec as well. Um, and that's, that's really a, a big differentiator. So if you had a, a, a library full of masters, um, you, would, you would use our video on demand service, Media uh, Convert, to, to uh, accomplish that. Outputs, uh, very quickly uh, pulling that up as well, because again, it's not, now it's not just running to adaptive streaming. Today, we're going to focus on that. But all the way down to you know, QuickTime uh, ProRes output, if you had that as a, as a need. Um, and then, again, working with job templates. So when you do something uh, you know, multiple times, you don't need to go in and set it up each time. You can set up a template and, and run with it. Additional features, I'm going to call out very quickly, 4K, HEVC, high dynamic range. Uh, that is uh, both Dolby and HDR10. Um, and then we do also support very, very, very newly, that's why it's not on the slide, uh, Dolby Atmos just came into the product uh, um, about a month ago, I believe. Um, SCUDI 35, you do add insertion or anything like that, that can also uh, be processed through the system as well. Now, you can process media, and if you do process live, and you process it out to HLS, and you process it out to smooth, and you process it out to all of these different options for your end users to make sure that their devices can actually watch the video, uh, that's a lot of processing. So. Um, we came out with a product called Media Package that actually allows you to transcode once and then just in time package. Uh, so essentially, you can create the media and then the media is sitting at rest. And until one user logs in, nothing's happening with that media. And then when that one user logs in with a device that requires a certain format, that actually gets wrapped and output on the fly as needed. Uh, and then when a 1,000 more people log in, they're just tapping into that stream. If another device logs in, you create another flow. So 
That's not all that Media Package does. Uh, I'll get to the rest in a moment, but here's what I'm talking about. So in an adaptive stack, you would typically have uh, several layers of video. So somebody with a really good connection is getting a really good quality of experience. Somebody with a really bad connection is not watching paused video. They're watching degraded video. That helps you keep your subscribers, because people care a lot less about degraded video than they care about a signal that's not there. Um, but that's, that's multi-tier transcoding. So if you did that out to multiple endpoints, you would end up having essentially that first uh, adaptive stack times three in this use case. But instead of doing that, you can actually run it to a uh, media package, which will then wrap it out to multiple endpoints uh, on the fly. It's a very, very useful tool, not just for uh, the sake of packaging, like I was mentioning, um, you can actually start to play with other things in the environment, things like DRM, things like ad insertion. Um, you can uh, activate NPVR functionality. So somebody taps into this live event. Do you want them to stay live? Do you want them to be able to rewind to the beginning, catch up TV, things like that? Um, so it, it's, it's certainly not just doing just-in-time packaging. It's doing just-in-time packaging with a lot of extra feature uh, getting added to the media. Um, DRM, I'm not going to go too deep into, but I did figure people in the audience might care about what we do support, so uh, I wanted to very quickly call out that, uh, the, the uh, formats that we support. And then we get to delivery. Delivery now, we've got, you know, live signal has come in, it's been transcoded, it's been just in time packaged, it's ready for delivery. Uh, if we delivered everything out of California and somebody on the other side of the world logged in, that would be uh, a pretty poor experience for them. Uh, so we have a content delivery network that has multiple uh, POPs, as, as uh, is the industry knows. It has, so when somebody logs in on the other side of the, uh, the world, they get a local connection, uh, which helps for the signal latency. It helps for the signal reliability. Um, and so an example of what a live streaming workflow would look like uh, that would leverage these things is, is up on the screen now. So, you kind of get to where we took out the front end, but you, let's say it's coming from an S3 bucket or a camera, comes into media package after it's been transcoded, and then goes out to the cloud front for distribution to these edge locations and then out to the users. Same type of thing for a video on demand streaming architecture.